lot of people think when a front moves through that these fish move miles away from where they normally feed. Nothing could be further from the truth. Man, that's crazy. It's almost like hunting. The range for these fish has gone from here to here. Oh yeah, look at the size of him. There he is. How nice is that? The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Sale, the Canadian Outdoors Superstore. Coleman, the outdoor company. Cooper Tires, life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. And Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Pressure. We feel it, the fish feel it, but what is it? Well, let's start from the beginning. On last week's show, we talked about Nakagami Lake being the perfect spot to showcase the advanced electronics available in today's sonar products. Nakagami is a glacial lake that formed about 10,000 years ago by the retreat of a massive ice sheet called the Laurentian Tide Glacier. In fact, many of the hundreds of thousands of lakes across this vast area were formed during this glacial retreat. They were so impacted by the sheer weight of this ice sheet that the surrounding earth is still rebounding. This explains the rough multi-layered bottom of Nakagami Lake. The extensive inflows and outflows provide nutrients and great water circulation. This is walleye heaven. On last week's show, How Does a Pistol Pete ran a clinic on how to catch these walleye. <laughs> I've got them dialed into a, a 50 foot circle. Look at that beast. Well, we didn't know it at the time, but he was actually fishing on the cusp of a prefrontal low. And despite the sophisticated electronics he was using, Mother Nature was giving him a leg up. Let's talk about what she was actually doing. We've all heard the stories. Not one bite all day, cold front came through. Or most famously, you should have been here yesterday. So what's really happening? It's about changes in barometric pressure in the air and water and the effect these changes have on an ecosystem. When we refer to cold fronts, people automatically assume that uh, you've got a major temperature change and that's what triggers the front or the change. Well, it's not the case, it's a barometer change. And generally, when a system moves in, if you've had you know, nice stable weather and all of a sudden uh, the big clouds form in the sky and they start pushing your way, well, they're being pushed by pressure and that's called a pressure system. And that's what activates the barometer up or down. And that's what the fish are reacting to. It has nothing to do with the actual temperature. It's the, the pressure, the barometer, um, tells them that it's time to shut down. That means it is time to turn everything off, hunker down somewhere, and wait it out. Wait for a more stable system to move through. The explanation lies in the very bottom of the food chain with microscopic sized animals called zooplankton and phytoplankton. When a pressure system moves through, the shallow water is affected by the actual pressure, which means all of the tiny, the tiniest of life forms start shutting down, and it just triggers a domino effect all the way down the food chain. And of course, the predator who depends on all that food, he's got he's to call it quits for the day. And that's what these walleye are doing. During this period, which can last anywhere between 24 and 72 hours, the feeding zone of a mid-range predator can go from several hundred feet to as little as six inches in just a matter of hours. There's a common misconception that when a front moves in, the fish disperse and go into the deepest part of the lake and become impossible to catch. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. All they do is go to their comfort zone and stay put. They tend to look for places that offer shelter from the other predators, but still have the potential of ambushing a quick meal. You kind of think that maybe the walleye have moved to a traditional area of the lake where they prefer to be during cold front conditions, which could be on the other side of the lake, a mile or two up the road. But really, they're not much different than bass. Feeding shelf there, so where are they gonna be when things get tough? In the trenches. This one, the one out there, the one out at the front. The fish have just slid over and down. When this happens, they're not gonna be actively feeding. I'm gonna have to drop my bait right on their noses. And with the Garmin, that shouldn't be that difficult. Oh, oh, 
Oh my. Bet you're getting the bucket. <laughs> Come on, buddy. With the walleye being lazy and lethargic and their strike zone so small, nothing short of real minnows will do. The takeaway from this experience, don't overreact when the weather changes on you. Sometimes less is more. I think I've discovered something. There he is. Oh, pike, that's why he looks so long and sonar. A lot of people think that when a front moves through or, or wind conditions change or the time of day, that these fish move miles away from where they normally feed. And nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the easiest way to find them during those conditions is look at a map or charts like on this Garmin and look for the easiest way for those fish to go from shallow to deep. Easiest way meaning the quickest way that they can get to the deep water that's available to them in that area. And generally, if you just follow that path, they'll be sitting there. Now, I wasn't counting on this little pike, this little snake, but he, obviously he's doing the same thing as the walleye. He's moving in and out just like they are. Yeah, that's a better fish. Nice Wally. Now he hit that as soon as it hit bottom. The very second it hit bottom, I felt a second tap and that was him. But really light. You know, you'd think a predator like this, when, when they attack a bait, you'd think there'd be mayhem every time, but not, uh, not so for Mr. Walleye. Yeah, you'd think something like that would just smack that bait, wouldn't you? Or, or they, they, I guess, I'd love to be able to study that underwater, to see how a walleye hits your bait, because nine times out of 10, it's in and out, you don't even feel it. And then when they do decide to take it, it's such a subtle little tip. Love to be able to see it. Beautiful fish, though, aren't they? Up they go. See ya. Okay, so. I think I've discovered something. I've thrown everything at these things, by the way, uh, except the kitchen sink, and I was gonna go to that next, but I said, you know, rather than do that, let's uh, try good old faith. Well, that's just the regular jig head. Mind you, this one's got a bit of a sparkle to it, which sometimes really triggers those fish. Now, under these light conditions, I don't know. I'm not so convinced, but I tied it on anyways. Uh, and live bait. Shaking going on. A decent little walleye. And I saw that fish again just on that 30 foot break right off this island. They're uh, typical post spawn fish. Probably finished spawning about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Just off these big breaks, but we've had such a severe temperature drop for the last uh, 24 hours, about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, that it's pretty much shut these things down. And yesterday we were out on these shoals fishing really aggressive fish with uh, jerk baits and swim baits and jigs and plastics, everything, you name it, they were hitting it, but then they just shut down with this cold front moving through, so we're gonna have to slow it down a little bit and uh, really finesse, really really tighten the, the uh, our target area. The range for these fish has gone from here to here. You can see it right on the screen. That was great. Love it when you can do that. He's right on the bottom, laying right down. Big mark right on the bottom. Oh, that's gorgeous. This is a bizarre situation, I gotta tell you. I don't know when I've had, if I've had this kind of action on a flat day like this. I mean, it's totally opposite of what you want for, for walleye fishing. I mean, you want a bit of wind, you want some chop, you want some action going. This is flat. We're barely drifting. But what's nice about it though, because we're barely drifting, you can literally see them on the, on the Garmin and just put that presentation right on their noses because they're not moving. These fish are not moving. As you can tell, this is a very lethargic fish. I mean, a fish that size, when he's on and he's active, he'd be jumping all over the place. I, can, I think I'm gonna be able to lift this fish right up without a net. 
That's how lethargic he is. And they're showing up when you've got really detailed sonar like this. They really show up well. It's not just a contour on the bottom. It's an, you can see it's a fish. And dropping a jig right in front of him on his nose. Nine times out of 10, if you get it within that strike zone, which is very, very small when they're this slow, they'll bite. All right. That is a very lethargic walleye in the roof of his mouth. There we go. Now, when they're this sluggish, you can put your hand under their belly like that and they don't go nowhere. That is so cool. Look at that. Okay, back to sleep, buddy. Sorry to interrupt your little nap. I gotta tell you, that's different. Real different. Really different. Now, a couple of days ago, all the activity was up on top of the shoal, which is about eight feet, and the fish were really active. A lot of wave action, low light conditions. They were right on top and at, and at, at the top of their game in terms of feeding. But they've since dropped off. Man, that's crazy. It's almost like hunting. Today's Nakagami Lake hotspot is on a break line off of a shallow hump about 100 yards from last week's episode. The waypoint on your screen will get you right there. When a changing weather system moves in and the shallow water fish seem to disappear, the first thing that should be checked is the adjacent deep water. Look for breaks along with anything different like boulders or even deep weeds that may hold fish. Live bait is a number one choice simply because that pressure change has put the entire food chain on pause. And quite honestly, meat on the hook is the ultimate way to go. Working slow is the key. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. Yep. Just like you're supposed to. <laughs> Just the baby. There we go. Wow, that was a deep fish. <laughs> That's a nice little line. Cool. That's a little better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, nice walleye. <laughs> we'll be netting that one, brother. Nice, nice. Nice. Yeah, that felt different right away. <laughs> Look at the size of him. <laughs> That's a beauty. Now this is really, this is really weird because, oh, <laughs> this is bizarre. If you look around the boat right now, it looks like a mill pond, absolutely flat water, not a ripple in it. And look, oh my God, that is bizarre. And no fight, no nothing, man. <sighs> look at that. How nice is that? I'm not kidding you, this place is looking like a mill pot right now. That is so cool. Lethargic as heck though. The little ones have been fighting, but this guy, it's like he wasn't even, he didn't even know he was hooked. That was totally unexpected, I gotta tell you. With this water flattening out the way it has, I was kind of thinking I was done. I was homeward bound. Whew. All right. A little tinsel jig that I cut down in hopes that maybe they were a little bit lethargic. Not that lethargic though. And I trimmed it up just to give it a little smaller profile. Wow, that's great. 
I'm so lucky I found these fish here, you know, because in a lot of cases, this would be a total disaster for, for me or any other walleye angler, for that matter. You go, you plan, you've only got a couple of days to fish, the weather changes on you, and, and the whole thing just is a big mess. Well, you know what? I learned a lesson on this. They do not move far. They do not move far. They're right here. To get to today's awesome walleye fishing, we first took Highway 400 north to Highway 69. We then took Highway 17 northwest to White River. We then turned right onto 631, which took us to the Ford Air Base near Hornpain, Ontario. From there, it was a short flight to Timberwolf Lodge. Today's KLP really drives home the K-factor, as we call it, or knowledge. You know, it's really important to know not just the basics about the species that you're after, but some of the real intricacies. For example, on today's program, we're fishing for walleye, and we had a bit of adverse condition. A cold front moved in during our shoot. So day one, they're happy and frolicking in the shallows on the what we call the buffet, the dinner table on the shallow in the shallows. But cold front moves through, and as anglers, uh, we all dread the cold front because in our opinions, in most cases, those fish have moved a million miles away. While with a little bit of knowledge about walleye, you soon learn that they will not go far from the dinner table. Their need to feed far exceeds than their need to move. So on today's episode, what we simply did is moved off to the first break, the first deep water adjacent to the flat that they were feeding on, and there they are. And the best part about that is that when they're in that mode, that shutdown mode, they don't move. So if you can use a real high resolution uh, sonar, like this little Garmin, you can get right on top of those babies and pluck them. I mean like fishing in a barrel. K is the important factor today, folks. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, nothing works harder than a Ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine.